Morning, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. The snow has stopped falling and I finally managed to clear my pathways out to stay. At least for one day anyway. It's supposed to snow again tomorrow. Got my solar panels swept off. It is gray, dark gray and yucky. It was supposed to be sunny this morning. And I guess the weatherman isn't uh, doing so hot. Um... Again, I'd rather be warned and not have it happen than not to be warned and have it happen. In the first blizzard, they hyped it up and warned and warned and promoted it. And the second blizzard passed without a warning. <laughs> it silently came and went and now I have drifts of snow in front of my house. But they didn't warn us because they were embarrassed for the first mess up which I would prefer to be warned, like I said, and not have it happen. That's part of being prepared. Preparedness, preppers, people who are prepared at all times for any sort of emergency, often don't see an emergency or a disaster. And they're not embarrassed about that. You might live your whole life without seeing a house fire, but you're taught in school, at least I was taught in school, to practice fire drills every year, multiple times a year, for your safety. I never saw the school burn down. I'm happy for it. But I was prepared. And uh, I think that's a good thing. So, I would rather have been prepared for this and warned properly. But anyway, <clears throat> just my ranting. So, I would like to explain something that even in the comments, I keep forgetting about my solar panel power output. Okay, it's winter. The sun is lower in the sky. You get reduced solar on your panels. I see people commenting that they get more. I find that amazing because every forum, website, book, and uh, discussion I've read always says they get reduced solar panel output in northern climates because the sun is lower in the sky and it's passing through well, it's, it's angles and atmosphere, and you're not getting as much solar radiation on your panels. That's why we have snow on the ground. That's why we have colder weather. Same thing with your panels. You've got less sun, less solar radiation. Just think about it. If I had the same solar radiation right now as I had in winter, or in summer, then this snow wouldn't be on the ground. But there's reduced solar radiation this time of year because the sun is lower in the sky. It's further from me right now. And that is exactly why we have winter and snow. And that's exactly why my solar panels are not putting out enough power or as much as they would in summer when the sun is closer to me and higher overhead and causing warmth and more solar radiation. Now, another problem is this. I sometimes get, and sometimes they get all excited and grab the camera and say, look, it's clear and sunny, but then soon, soon after that, clouds come. I hardly see a single day go by with the sun shining the entire day. That gives me reduced overall solar panel output. And I'm going to try next time to be more specific on that with my camera and say, oh look, the sun's shining now, but later say, oh look, there's clouds. Therefore, it's not going to give me 800 watts of solar uh, from 800 watts of solar panels per hour because I might see peaks. It might happen when I'm not looking at the charge controller, but still, again, if the sun was shining as powerfully on the earth as it was in summer, this wouldn't be on the ground right now. So keep that in mind when you think about the solar panel output here. I just don't have the solar radiation. Now, people in different locations, uh, it also depends on your... Well, I've got trees. A lot of people don't have the trees interfering as much as I do. Often the sun is, is shining bright and it's cloudless, but the trees are interfering with the sun hitting my panels completely and fully. And that's another problem. So, again, my problems might not be the same as your problems. I just want to clear that up, that everybody's home is different, and that's why there are people who are trained for years 
to go and analyze with computers and programs and equipment uh, people's homes. Now, my landlady, let's just tell you about that. She wanted to get solar on her house. They have this deal where you can get free, in quotes, free solar panels. I say in quotes because it's not really free. They, well, yes and no. Um, they put solar panels on your house. They install it. They cover your, your roof with solar panels. And then they charge you for the electricity you use. So it's not really free. I mean, you're still paying for electricity, but you're paying a reduced price. So she would have seen a reduction on her her uh, energy or her power bill. I think she said something that's like, usually it's around $200 a month and it would have been reduced to a uh, fixed rate. I think it was like going to be $50 less fixed rate or it was going to be fixed at 200 where she peaks sometimes above that. But anyway, it didn't sound too exciting to me. She liked it because every dollar saved is a dollar saved. Problem is, they said no. They said that her location was not good enough. It wasn't going to work for them to get enough uh, money back in their investment. So that means my location is not optimal for solar panel um, output. That's the pros. Professional company, trained and schooled, and out there to make a, make a dollar, said no to her. So location is everything. It's very, very important where you are located. Mountains, trees, hills, valleys, um, all kinds of things. The angle of your roof. Uh, so many variables affect solar panel output. And eventually with time, I'm going to be increasing what I do get by repositioning the solar panels and trimming some trees. Now, I've really been given a lot of thought because people are advising me, don't cut these trees. They're my shade in summer. But they also shaded my, my garden out here, my herb garden. There was so much shade that I didn't get any sunlight on the herb garden. And if I keep this tree here, that tree won't be blocking the sunlight on my solar panels, which will be on the roof right here. I'm going to build an overhang facing south. That's south. Well, that's south. Okay, so south-southwest. I'll have an overhang on the front of the house. And then I'll have to take out this, this little tree, this tree, and this tree. But yet... This little clump of trees here and here will be protecting me from the morning to noon uh, worst of the sun. And then taking out these little guys here will allow me to get most of my midday sun. And right here, that'll allow me to get my sun and my solar panels. And especially in summer, uh, winter, right now, winter, these little guys right here are blocking me a lot. And this one right here is especially blocking me a lot, especially in particular that branch. I've been analyzing the house heavily each day in um, when the sun shines to see where it's hitting and which branches are blocking. And particularly this branch right here is blocking me because the sun just barely clears these trees and then goes down right here. The sun comes across right across here. It comes up a little bit and then sets right about here. So it's barely clearing those trees, so the solar panels in the meadow now are not getting as much sun as they would up by the house. But up by the house, these tree branches right here and this one right here are blocking the sun. So I've got to trim something in order to bring the solar panels out here or I'll have even less solar. So I hope that clears up things a little bit on why I have less solar than you might have, for example, and how I plan to improve what I do get. It's also about the wires. I do have long wires. My solar panels are wired in series. Okay. I have four 200 and what do I want to say? 240 watt solar panels. 200 watt. Four 200 watt solar panels wired in series. They're 24 volt panels with an open, volt, uh, open voltage of about 30 volts. So one is connected to the other, to the other, to the other giving me about 130 volts on the charge controller, what the charge controller sees at only about 8 amps peak. 
so my wires are seeing 130 volts at 8 amps DC so that's less losses in the lines but I still have about 100 120 feet 150 feet of wire between here and the house or between them and the house so that's I'm seeing some losses and I need to improve that by moving the panels up to the house I'll have less wiring less losses so I'm going to begin by hooking up a second set of panels. I'm looking at the meter of the wind turbine as I talk. It's spinning, but I'm only getting about 6 volts. So that's another thing I have to change, is the location of the wind turbine for better wind. So, hope that all clears everything up. I will be making a lot of changes as soon as I get some more wire here. I have a box in the mail from Molly Dolly. This will be the first I've got from that direction. So then I gotta get a knife. So, trying to get in the view here. It says it was received in damaged condition, so it has some tape on it. Hopefully there's nothing missing. Sealed up well enough should be a problem. Let's see what we have here. Oh, interesting. So, where do we start? Oh, there's a blue fuzzy hat. Baby likes the smell of the blue foot. Boy, that is soft. Wow. Hmm. This gives me some ideas. The color blue. Is Molly instigating things? What do you think, people? Is she looking for trouble? Hmm. Lead test kit. This is for the barn. The baby likes that. You like the feel of that, don't you? She likes that hat. Lead test kit is for the barn wood. I hear that some, uh, uh, in quotes, friends of mine are going to turn me over to the EPA and we will head them off of the pass and make sure there's no lead in my barn wood. That, by the way, I am not burning. I um, haven't burnt any of the painted stuff. I wouldn't uh, risk doing that without testing for lead anyway. Well, thank you, Molly, for the uh, test kit. I will definitely be doing that. Oh, weird feeling. Carhartt, nice. Got some uh, special grip gloves. Rubbery grip gloves. And we've got a rattle trap. Fishing lure. Be trying that out in the uh, in the lake this summer. Nice. And some good snacks. Blueberry, cranberry, cherry, and fruit and nut mix. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Miley Dally. And uh, I'm sorry to say this after you've sent me a package full of goodies, but watch out. It's blue. <laughs> you BBK, you gotta check everything, don't you? Huh? Yeah, you do. Uh, I've got a big envelope. Now I know who this is from. I checked the packing slip. This is from From the Prairies. The same person who sent me the uh, the uh, leather, which by the way, the leather, which is sitting on my desk now, is supposed to be for use when I work on my electronics and projects, and I've already put it to use once. This protects the table from harm and damage when I'm working on electronics and projects. And from the prairies has sent me, oh nice! A very nice cloth tablecloth for my uh, my table. Look at that, a real thing. It's a nice real cloth tablecloth. No more plastic. <laughs> she said she didn't like the uh, the looks of that plastic. It had served its purpose and run its course. It was worn out. And so, all right, 
I get the hint. I'll uh, I'll get rid of the plastic tablecloth and I'll put this on today. Well, thank you very much. I just got the DC generator running and I've got my brand new meter which I've been playing around with a lot around here. Um, I just found out some horribly shocking news. Let me see if I can show you this while I record. Since it's on DC, 400 amp setting DC. I'm going to show you if I can get it on here and show you. Do you see that? That's pitiful. It was 28 a minute ago. It was 28 amps and it's dropping. Maybe it's uh, adjusting uh, itself as needed. That does have a regulator in it, so maybe it's self-adjusting. Because the charge controller inside is showing the green light. Um, so I don't know, but that's not too... Uh, now it's down to 22. Dropping. So I think this is self-regulating. Anyway, I'm going to let it run a while. I've disconnected all other drains, all other cables, and I'm just going to let this run. I had the Harbor Freight going so that I could get it jump started. I had to run the little Harbor Freight generator so I could jump start that little guy because or the DC generator because it was uh, pulling too much current to start it. I ran the DC generator with the battery charger on 20 amps for a few minutes and then I was able to get this to start. Well, anyway, I'm going to let it run out a whole tank of gas. See the charge controller is showing a green light and 13.7 volts DC. I got zero watts coming in from the solar panel, so when I went out a minute ago with the camera, it was one watt, so that's the end. That's it for the day. So I think that's why, see the green light, I think that's why that is self regulating and reducing the current from the alternator. That's my guess, because it was 28 when I checked it at first, and then it dropped to 22 as you were watching. So it looks like it definitely is self-regulating and reducing the current out of the alternator. Um, there's no other explanation for that, because that's supposed to be 130 amp capacity. And even with the, the engine running, I would think that the engine would bog out and die if it was trying to pull too much current. That was my thought.